talking points here. So Dave Ramsey organization has something called the ELP program. And it's something that for years, Julie and I would tell our coaching clients to at least seriously consider. When the ELP program came out, it was a 25% referral fee. It was a very clean referral. It was very, just everything about it was, we liked it. It was good. It was essentially the type of business that's okay paying for because it's an agent to agent referral in essence. Well, over the years, guess what? It's got saturated. Then it got oversaturated. And then he started charging $250 a month. And then there was a, you know, a 25% referral fee. And now I've been told, though I don't know this, has gone to 40%. And now they've decided uh, for some competitive reason, I can only imagine, that if you're an EXP agent, they're not going to allow you to be an ELP. Uh, now, it could be because there's uh, you know maybe relationships between Keller Williams and Dave Ramsey or uh, Remax and Dave Ramsey. Who knows? Who cares? But the moral of the story is, is if you were an agent who was dependent on buying leads, getting leads from Dave Ramsey... Now you're basically, you've essentially built your mansion on someone else's land. So these sorts of mistakes have a tendency to be repeated over and over and over again in different forms. So maybe you're not buying leads from Zillow anymore, but now you're going to slip it down another slippery slope, not realizing you're going to end up with the same result. Um, Chris, who said agents who are buying their business are going to be out of business in 24 months. I don't think it's even going to take that long. So Julie... Yes. So what does the day-to-day look like without paid leads? And, you know, agents do get anxiety breaking up with these companies because they think they're getting something when, in fact, they're getting nothing. Well, they get anxiety it. because they don't know what else to do. That's right. That's, That's right. the it's reason like they, they have... get something, but they're not sure what to do next. Yep. So what do you do next? Well, agents will have to do their part and take a more hands-on approach to their own marketing, focusing on their own analytics and their own activities so they know what messages are getting responses. Some of them are spending money in yeah. other places. So it's the shift. So here's what I want to point out to you guys. This article is basically saying they're going from buying leads back to buying leads. That's what I want you guys to focus on when I'm trying to share with you. This article starts with saying how buying leads is a bad idea and you're going to be out of business. And the article ends with these agents talking about the fact they're going to do the same thing. They're just going to spend their money in a different way. That's right. That's the gist of the article. The whole article, so like, for example, many agents we talk to are focused on branding and content building, creating your own digital realm, online presence. Social media, of course. Very things Julie and I make fun of every day on the show. (laughs) Social media, virtual communication, and driving traffic to their websites. Now, let's talk about that. There was an article actually on Inman written by Teak uh, Wiggins, an excellent article that says the average agent gets a total. Now, this is a question. I'll pose this question a different way. Listeners, how many leads do you think the average agent gets per year from their agent website? How many would you guess? How many? Throw out a number in your head. Well, you're all wrong. The answer is zero. According to the article that was written on Inman by Teak Wiggins, the average agent gets zero leads from their uh, their websites. Why? Because it's oversaturated. Because the opportunity, other than spending money to generate business online, is long since gone. The, the you know essentially the kings have already been declared. But Tim, what about SEO? Can I just pay somebody for somebody to find my website? Well, okay, so let's you know this article also talks about doing Facebook advertising and all this other stuff. Mm-hmm. You guys are going to end up in the exact same place because your whole business is going to be predicated on you never learning how to be proactive lead generators. As long as you buy your business as your primary source of business, you will always be on the edge of being broke, and that's the thing you have to be clear of in your head. Now. Also, be clear about this. Do Julie and I think that there's a place in your business to buy leads? Yes, we do. But it comes after you've learned how to be a proactive lead generator, not the first thing you do. And this article doesn't even mention that. This article goes on to talk more about essentially different ways they're going to buy leads and all these agents are going to end up right where they started. And they think, like for example, search engine optimization. So you realize how much time and money you're going to have to spend to even get on a high placement on the second page of Google. And and so what's your alternative? Well, Tim, I'm just going to do a pay-per-click ad and I'm going to put my name and my website on that first uh, top spot. Okay, you could do that. 